Hello everyone, happy Easter. So how many of you have already been on an Easter egg hunt today? Awesome, where did you find your eggs? Great, maybe you'll go on an Easter egg hunt later today. This is some Easter egg hunt fun that we've already had. Take a look. Easter egg hunts are definitely a fun part of the Easter celebration. I am glad that he finally found those Easter eggs because in the beginning he was looking in all the wrong places. Hey, that reminds me of the Easter story. Come along and I'll show you what I mean. When we talk about Easter and celebrate everything that happened that week, we usually begin talking about Palm Sunday. This was the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey the crowd had gathered, they were waving palm branches, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were so excited that Jesus was there. But then the Jewish leaders got upset because Jesus didn't turn out to be the kind of king that they thought he should be. See, they wanted a warrior king, a king that would come in and overthrow the Roman Empire. But we know that Jesus came in as a peaceful and loving and humble king. And so they made a deal. They told Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' 12 disciples, that they would give him 30 pieces of silver if he betrayed Jesus. And Judas took the deal. So that week on Thursday, Jesus and his disciples gathered for one last meal together. This meal we know as the Last Supper. During that meal, Jesus took a cup and he explained to his disciples that when they drank from it, he wanted them to remember that his blood would be shed for the forgiveness of their sins. And while it confused them at the time, in just a few short days, they would understand the meaning of what Jesus had said. After the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. See, Jesus had become deeply saddened and troubled because he knew what was about to happen. He prayed that God would give him the strength to do what needed to be done. After Judas betrayed Jesus in the garden that night, the Jewish leaders took him before Pilate and they put him on trial, claiming that he was an enemy of the Roman Empire. It was after this trial that they had Jesus beaten and a crown of thorns placed on his head. They then had Jesus nailed to a cross. See, Jesus had never sinned. He didn't deserve to die, but we have sinned. But because Jesus loves us so much and his love is unconditional and unfailing, he died for us. He took our place and he took that punishment for us. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, the Roman soldiers gambled for his robes and they took a spear and pierced the side of his body to make sure that he was indeed dead. After Jesus died, Joseph of Arimathea got permission to take Jesus' body and he wrapped it in linen cloth. He then placed Jesus' body in a tomb that belonged to him. A large stone was rolled across the entrance of the tomb because some of the Pharisees were concerned that Jesus' disciples would come and try and take his body. Pilate even had Roman soldiers stand guard at the entrance of the tomb and they placed a Roman seal on it so that no one could get in or out without breaking the seal. It was here that Jesus' body lay for three days. That first Easter Sunday morning didn't start out as a happy Easter. For Jesus' friends and his disciples and for Mary, they had just seen Jesus be put to death on a cross and they saw his body placed in a tomb. And so when Mary got up on Sunday morning and went back to Jesus' tomb to finish preparing his body for burial, what she found was the stone had been rolled away, 
the Roman soldiers were gone, Jesus' body was gone. The only thing left were Jesus' grave clothes. They didn't find Jesus there. Do you know why? They were looking in the wrong place. See, an angel appeared to Mary that morning and told her, do not be afraid. He was about to give her the best news she could ever hope for. He said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. And friends, that's the truth today. Jesus is risen. When Jesus rose from the dead, he proved that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. He defeated sin and death, and those things no longer have power over those who believe in Jesus. Shortly after Jesus rose from the grave, he returned to his home in heaven. And not long after that, he sent the Holy Spirit to live in the hearts of all of those who believe in him. Anyone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the one who died for the forgiveness of your sins, can receive the Holy Spirit. It's just like the angel said, Jesus is among the living. He is still changing and saving lives today. So this Easter, as you're enjoying your candy, let it be a sweet reminder of what Jesus has done for you.